very difficult move here. Yes. Not quite complete. Supposed to be a complete 360. Just the dismount, double back somersault. And good. All right. Well, she pulls through. All right. So Terry Strug. Good job. Very good job. Trying to pick up the spirits of the American team. Yeah, that really is a totally different mindset for Terry. Usually in a competition, it's only her out on the floor. We take a look at that first tumbling sequence. Elfie, my only criticism is the knees really aren't quite as locked out as they should be. Tim, we're seeing more of a bend because it's in slow motion replay, but uh, you're right. That's something she's going to have to really concentrate on before Atlanta and then the dismount. So powerful, so high. Just a small hop on the landing. So, Kerry Strug looking to give the U.S. team a lift. Take a look at the individual scores and John Roethlisberger's 9.1, a direct result of that fall from the pommel horse. A total of 27.95. We'll see if that's enough for the United States to advance to the final round. The opening ceremony of the Atlanta Olympics. Work continues on the Olympic Park just a few blocks from the Omni. And inside the Omni, the United States has to sit and wait and see if they will be one of the teams to advance to the final round. Kerry Strug did her part with a 9.6 on the beam. Up now is Camille Martins of Canada. She will be performing the rhythmic ball. Camille Martins. And with more on the rhythmic ball, here's Elfie. Greg, key elements to look for in all rhythmic routines are combinations of turns, balances, and leaps. This is one discipline where the gymnast strives for the illusion that the apparatus is actually an extension of her body. Greg, Camille actually started rhythmic gymnastics with 1984 Olympic champion Lori Fung in Vancouver. She's now moved to Toronto to train with one of the great Bulgarian coaches, Ludmila Dimitrova. She felt that she needed the change. Ludmila has coached every athlete at every level of the sport, European champions, World Cup champions, and Olympic champions. What you'll notice in this routine is that the music really builds, and it builds along with the intricate moves. There's a great balance move. And Elfie, you mentioned the tremendous flexibility. Many people at home watch men's and women's gymnastics and are marvel at the flexibility, but these young ladies are far more flexible. It's incredible. of flexibility and balance. Neil told me earlier that she really emphasizes expression in all of her routines. You see the audience is drawn into her performance. Very difficult skill right there. Excellent double turn. Again, one of the trends in rhythmic gymnastics since the 1992 Olympics. More emphasis on turns and balances. That's Camille Martin. Canadian Camille Martin. A member of a real Bill mixed trio. She's grouped old. with Diego Lazardi of Puerto Rico Toronto. and Oksana Chusevitna. Uh, but she might choose the floor exercise. You know. She's very powerful on the floor exercise. And of course, in this event, strategy is key. You want to make it to the next round. However, she does have a good array of elements. She has performed very strong uh, recently at the American Cup, so this shouldn't be a problem. Opening up very, very powerful mount, front on. Remember, Bokinskaya did the same element with the jump combination after it. She's a very calm competitor, very relaxed. Her choreography, however, is her downfall on this apparatus. Her strength, of course, are the big trick elements. Her power, she gets great height on her jumps. one of those skills right now, front summy. 
does it with such ease. Look how high it is, a little bit of a balance right there. Rather simple combination, backhand swing to a layout. Most of the top international stars are combining that with two or three layouts in a row. Then the leap combination, as I said, she gets great height. But as you said, Elfie, she really doesn't have the aesthetic value that we see in some of the other athletes. Things look a little bit rougher. And that's her style. Yeah, you know, that often happens, though, when you have an athlete that's so powerful, she can capitalize on, you know, high dismounts like that. She does that so easily. She could add it quick. Susevitna and Bogenskaya, years old, teammates on the She's gold medal winning unified team in Barcelona. Also a bronze medalist. Here's the move where she had just a slight balance break, about a tenth deduction, but look how high she is. Landing a little bit low and then just off to the left side, but she manages to pull it all on. That's Oksana Chuzovitna. So Oksana Chuzovitna completes her performance takes a seat and as we look at the scores that team total is higher than the US team which now falls to third place then Svetlana Boganskaya for Belarus Boganskaya those Olympics must feel so long ago she was the product of the Soviet gymnastics factory a child of the system this two-time Olympian did not know life outside of gymnastics in the Soviet Union. The most decorated gymnast of her time. She was the rival to United States gymnastics programs. She was the enemy. After failing to earn an individual medal in Barcelona, Svetlana Boganskaya retired. But at age 21, she came to a foreign land to train in her rival's gym. When I asked him if I can come here, he said yes. And it was his decision. And I'm so happy here, you know. I don't care what anybody say. I just want to be here and I want him to coach me. You know, it is ironic, this man's entire career, Bella Caroli, he has been battling that Soviet Union gymnastics machine, and now he's training one of their stars, Svetlana Boginskaya. And Tim, strange to see them together, 